Welcome, I'm WCNC Charlotte's Colin Mayfield with Shamaria Morrison, one of our amazing reporters who's been digging in for almost a couple of months now, right? Two yep. years going on now, uh, talking about some of the employees in Gaston County, some of the issues that they've had there with employees and paying their employees. Some are being paid, some are not being paid at all, and some are underpaid. So let's start with how did you find out about this and really what are we talking about in all of this? Well, let's start with that first question. How did I find out, right? Yeah. Um, well, at first, we didn't really know because these issues, uh, you'll see in our report, they had been happening actually for a while, almost two years ago, like you said. Um, yeah. But teachers didn't really start speaking out about it until about August. That's when we first did our first report on it. Okay. Um, it seemed a little bit smaller at first, but then we were like, oh no, this is a really big issue on a very large scale. Okay. Um, and it just kept going more and more. And I started to ask that question of, well, you know, someone's being paid to get this done. These are teachers' paychecks we're talking about, bus drivers' paychecks we're talking about. Right. And remember, we're in a teacher shortage. We're in a shortage of a lot of positions. And so that's really what prompted us to say, we need to dig a little deeper. We need to know what's happening. Um, and if there is money involved in trying to get this fixed, right. who's that money going to? And is it working? So the district switched payroll companies, which is the crux of all of the issues, really. Um, we'll, and we'll get more into that, but this is supposed to make things easier, this switch, right? It Talk was. about that. Um, so North Carolina, the General Assembly, uh, they said a couple of years back, hey, these payroll systems that we're using right now, they're really, really old, right? Okay. They were 40, 50 years old. So uh, it was understandable that Gaston County Schools said that we need to switch payroll systems, more of a cloud service type of thing. You know, we all kind of go to you upgrade right. as the years go by. Right. Um, and so Gaston County, though, uh, According to officials, you know, they had a choice to do it now or yep. maybe do it later. There were actually a couple of times where things had to be pushed back, uh, sometimes with the pandemic and yep. for other reasons. Um, but because these systems are so old, um, at some point, the General Assembly says, hey, we're going to give you all some money and we want you all to go ahead and update these systems. And mm. this was, again, supposed to make it easier, right? right. But we have to remember that Gaston County was doing a pilot program. And we know with pilots, uh. you figure out what's right. You figure yeah. out what's wrong, but I don't think anyone thought there would be so much wrong. Right. So here we are now today. Teachers are still uh, on the fringes trying to figure out if they've been paid right where they're at in all of this kind of mess. Um, you were able to speak to one of the teachers. Obviously, you had a number of in-depth interviews. If folks want to go and check those out, uh, they can do so. But talk about the specific interview that you had with the teacher and then really her perspective and and what she's feeling in all of this, too, because that's a part of it. Yeah, no, it really is. Her name was Adrian Scarce. You know, she did a couple of things actually with the district okay. and a very interesting thing that that's kind of one of the issues when it came to this payroll system. Uh, we were told a few months back by Gaston County Schools that the system kind of wasn't recognizing, let's say if you had multiple positions, which she did, uh, it wouldn't pay you correctly. So, you know, mm. a lot of times uh, teachers and other assistants, they might be a after school coach or they yeah. might be doing extra tutoring. And when you have all those different type of things in the system, um, according to Gaston County Schools a couple of months ago, they told us, well, that was one of the issues that was happening. Okay. Um, but she told me something uh, and she talked about how they're not in this profession truly to make money. A lot of it is very much what kind of difference they can make in children's lives, but they need a paycheck to eat, to get right. to school, right. to pay bills. And I want you to listen to this sound bite from her. She kind of talked about what it felt like because these problems that we found out were happening, they were happening just a few months after this program uh, actually went in. So this is what she says the atmosphere was like in Gaston County schools at the time when people start to kind of whisper about, hey, is your paycheck wrong? What's yeah. happening? Okay, let's listen. People first started to notice, you know, we had uh, forms that we would have to fill out in a Google document submitted. And we were told, um, you know, promised days of when this will be fixed, it'll be fixed by this day. Um, we'll get you your money. And, you know, our question was, well, why can't you just write us like a paper check? They had every excuse in the book as to why they could not write us a paper check. It, it, that that's hard. That's hard. And again, this wasn't just teachers who are facing this problems. You had right. bus drivers facing these problems, um, employees of all things. And so after a while, okay, you're missing one paycheck or one right. paycheck is short uh, or maybe two because, you know, teachers get paid every month. And so right. that's when they kind of figured out 
it was on a month by month basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your bills aren't stopping because there is a problem with the payroll system. They're continuing. And it's one of the reasons why Scare said she had just had to go. She has a new job now. Yeah. Um, and currently, as of this moment, she is still waiting uh, on her paycheck uh, as we record this right now. And I'll tell you this much. It's yeah. just about two hours after we asked Gaston County to respond to our investigation. Scare, she gave me a text said, hey, I just got a um, text or I'm sorry, an email from Gaston County Schools saying, huh. hey, we saw that you left the district. Uh, it seems that we didn't give you what you were owed. Um, we should be able to get it to you by Friday. So we're going to check in with her wow. uh, and we'll see what happens. But, Interesting. you know, some people still say they still don't have their money. So this is still lingering now. Um, and obviously in the original story, um, you pointed out, I think twice, there were some emails that you uncovered based off the district talking to other people at the state level, um, twice it seemed like. So what was behind all of that and what came of that? What, what, what did you learn from all of those emails? Cause it seemed like people understood there were some issues well before we got to this point today. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And so we put in some open records requests because um, we know that those emails are public documents. We wanted to see them. Teachers wanted to see them. Um, and what we found out was folks in Gaston County, North Carolina's Department of Public Instruction and uh, members of the vendor system who was doing this uh, Cherry Road Technologies, mm -hmm. they were all talking to each other um, all the way up into April. And this is huh. of last year. Remember the program, right. the payroll system went into J in January. Yeah. It's just a few months. So if we're seeing emails in April uh, that they're trying to get more help because something's not right, mm -hmm. that means they had been seeing problems for a few months into that. So we didn't even get into all the in between, but everyone was aware. And then really what I wanted to make sure that was clear was that while these things were going on in the background, I, I was scarce what was happening forward facing and they were being told it's it's getting handled. It's uh, getting done. Um, but again, we're almost two years in and there right. are still people who are reporting that they have problems. You know, Gaston yeah. County right now, yeah. uh, the school board at least has a lawsuit mm -hmm. against it right now. And it's led by two Gaston County school teachers, uh, one saying that she was overpaid. Now, that might not sound like a bad thing, but think about your taxes. Right. You don't want all that extra money. Yeah. Yeah, um, she said uh, at a Gaston County School Board meeting, uh, through tears, some of them, she talked about how her child actually goes to college. And you think of FAFSA, you think of mm -hmm. how much money your parents make is going to base on your financial aid. Yeah. Well, now she has a problem with that. And so it's just it, these implications of this payroll system go past the school doors. It's a um, ripple they, effect. It's a ripple effect. It really yeah. is. And it affects people's lives still to today, Absolutely. as you had said, two years after. Now, I got to ask this because I know people at home or maybe watching this are going to ask, so who's at fault here? I mean, I, it sounds like right there's a lawsuit at play. Got to have that work its way through the courts. But what's the fallout from this? You know, has anybody left the district? Has anybody uh, made any statements about what will happen? Wh where are we at? Uh, you know, there. I am still trying to figure out okay. where this responsibility ultimately lies. Um, speaking to all these different organizations and the school district, the state, uh, trying to speak to people at Cherry Road Technologies and Oracle. Um, I can't really figure out where that all lies, but I'll tell you this much. Um, you know, Gaston County, they didn't just sit on their hands. They did try to do this, but okay. again, um, this is a system that they were new with. And so um, they have been making some progress from where they were. Um, maybe not as much progress as people would like to see because, again, these are people's paychecks, their right. money, right. Um, but they have been doing things. And so I, we've kind of been looking at school board meetings to get updates on things. Okay. Um, but what we haven't seen um, is a lot of folks saying, OK, like you said, mm -hmm. who, who's to blame? Who's um, whose issue is? But we have seen some turnover. Okay. Uh, the highest at the highest level um, was a superintendent, Jeffrey Booker. But uh, when he said he was leaving, they never said it was due to these issues. But yeah. um, at a school board meeting in February, and we talk about it in my story, um, school board members really started to put the pressure on him and talk to him about, hey, this is something that's going to be hanging over your head because prior to this, um, they said he was a very, very good superintendent right. um, and they didn't want this to be his lasting legacy. But unfortunately, uh, when you say his name, 
this is going to pop up at yeah. some point in time. Just trying to make things more efficient, but obviously it went a little bit sideways. Um, is there a timeline of when things will get figured out? I know we're two years now and people are still waiting for money or they've been overpaid, as you had said a little bit earlier. So is there a timeline for any of this to be corrected? No timeline that okay. we have been given, no timeline that we've heard from teachers or other employees. Um, what we do know is, you know, the state intervened, North Carolina DPI intervened right. uh, to try to help Gaston County. They have contracted, obviously, lots of money to yep. get this problem fixed as well. Yep. And so we're still waiting. Gaston County Schools, some of their top leaders have said it would be catastrophic if they stopped uh, this rollout. So they just decided to just pull through and try to get those issues fixed. And again, some of those issues have been fixed. Um, a lot of people actually, I mean, I reached out to a teacher who I had talked to earlier uh, this year. She had been paid. So oh, wow. there are some folks who have been paid, some have not. But until it gets 100% and those who have left the district have gotten paid yeah. and those who are still in the district have gotten paid and everything is ironed out, um, I think we're going to continue to hear about this and also the lessons, what it's going to do because other school districts are also going to eventually start rolling this out. Interesting. Um, they get to choose companies that they want to work with. Um, according to DPI, they don't know of any more that are going with Cherry Road right now. But I can tell you that prior to this, yeah. um, we had local school districts who were going to go with Cherry Road who mm. have, have backed out at this point. Saw this and yeah, yeah. they could thinking twice about that. Um, of course, as we said at the beginning, I think this, you know, the onus and the responsibility of, of you kind of taking this story, fleshing it out, finding some of the nuances of this um, interesting. And, and I have to ask, uh, because it's human nature, I guess for me, what are these teachers who haven't been paid? Do you know what they've been doing? How have they been able to live without being paid and, and still going to school and teaching our kids um, and, and making good on that promise to us too. It's hard. Um, you know, we have talked about teacher shortages. Uh, Gaston County did have more uh, teachers leaving the district that we saw. They did open up this school year with less teachers. But like you said, there are those who have stayed, even okay. those who are part of the law who have uh, who have stayed. Um, and a lot of them are asking for help from families, um, yeah. their families. A lot of them are going without. Um, some are just getting more jobs because they don't know what their paycheck is going to look like every month. Okay. And paychecks are actually going to be coming down this week. So there are going to be folks who are just like, OK, is it going to happen this month? Is everything mm -hmm. going to be OK for me? Right. Um, and so they're just doing what they can like they always have. But I think it's students first. Like this isn't a regular job per se. Mm -hmm. Right. You know that uh, if you leave, Who's going to teach your students, right? right? If you leave, who's going to make that impact? And so right. I think this is different for them. They want to get paid properly, but yeah. they also just want to teach. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, and, and I always say it, I'm here because of a teacher. I think we all are, right? So we understand how impactful they are, but they've got to be able to live as well. So I know I filled a lot of questions at you. Am I missing anything else? There's a lot of nuances, a lot of things that we've been over, and I think we've highlighted some of the important things about this. Anything that, that I missed or that you wanted to let you know, our audience know about the story, anything else that you found interesting that maybe I didn't point out? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things were the talk about taxpayer dollars, right? Sometimes mm. we forget whose money is this going towards fixing these issues. Yes. Um, this isn't just a teacher problem. Uh, this isn't just a school district problem. This is a Gaston County problem, right? Because those are taxpayer dollars, whether it be on the local level or the state level, that is going towards these systems and going towards fixing them. And so um, it, it, it sounds awful sometimes because sometimes, you know, people are in their lives right now. They may not, yeah. for the most part, it's like, okay, I, I understand what's happening with the teachers, but I have so much going on in my own plate that I can't, right. can't come what can I do, right? Yep. But yep. when you think about your hard-earned taxpayer dollars going to something that may not be working, right. um, I think that this is going to make more people want some accountability of answering that question that I still haven't been able to answer of right. whose fault is this um, and why is this going? And so I think a lot of people, what they're looking for is someone to step out and say, hey, we messed up. Yeah, We messed up um, and this is how we're going to fix it. This is our timeline to fix it. And this is how we're being good stewards of taxpayer dollars because at the end of the day, that's what it is, taxpayer dollars. Absolutely it is. And let's hope there's some lessons learned as it sounds like there are other districts that are kind of thinking about how they're going to take this next step forward. So, Shay, appreciate your time. Appreciate your time watching this as we dig into this story. I know you've been dedicated for months for this, so we wanted to flesh it out. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Colin. There's definitely more to come. We just have to keep on digging. Absolutely. And keep us updated on everything that, uh, that breaks in this story. We appreciate you watching.